Well, joining me in the studio today are the Conservative leader of East Sussex County Council, Keith Glazier, and the newly elected Labour Member of Parliament for Canterbury, Rosie Duffield. A warm welcome to you both. Thank you. Now, Rosie, it's been your first week in Parliament proper, hasn't yes. it? How, how does it compare to your last job as a teaching assistant? It couldn't be more different, actually. It's um, just everything about the whole experience is really strange and a really steep learning curve, and every single day is different. It's very exciting. But people liken um, the Houses of Parliament to Hogwarts and it really is like that or like being in Canterbury Cathedral so old and then there's the modern bit lots to get used to yeah. yeah and it's been an interesting week already I mean things were looking good for Jeremy Corbyn after the election mm -hmm. there's a lot of unity being banded around but already there have been sackings from the front bench after a vote in the Commons on Thursday does this feel like a divided party to you no it honestly doesn't at all um, we've had our problems in the last couple of years as you know everybody knows but it really feels like when we have our PLP meetings for example once a week feels like the whole room is packed there's a really good atmosphere and we're all just raring to go hot on the heels of being much more successful than we expected to be. Okay, so, yeah. but how long do you think that can last, realistically? No idea, but I hope for a while at least, you know, we're facing a government with no mandate, so we're, you know, we're kind of going to enjoy that really for a while. Okay, so, Keith, let's enjoy that for a while, as yeah. Rosie said. I mean, last time, Rosie, Jeremy Corbyn failed to get the government, um, get, get his amendment to the Queen's speech on austerity through to, to um, release the public, public sector pay freeze. I mean, we know there's Conservative support, actually, for a lot of what Labour want to achieve. Why, why couldn't you get that through Parliament? Could you have done more to talk to your opposite numbers, perhaps, get I them think, on board? Well, we had hoped that more Tories would vote with us to um, stop that pay cap. And it was disappointing that quite a lot of Kent MPs didn't support us in that because they're also the ones that are being very vocal about cuts to our local hospitals for example so that was disappointing perhaps we could have done more but you know I don't know many people that want to keep a, a cap on you know the pay of people that work very hard like nurses and, so. and the mood music does seem to be changing but to what degree I wonder do you think the Labour front bench have uh, have played this correctly I'm thinking about the Grenfell link the fact that uh, yeah you, you made a face there yeah. your, your shadow chancellor used the word yeah. murdered to, to connect austerity with the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire. Were you comfortable with that? You look as though you were. Um, well, Stella Creasy mentioned on Question Time last night that she thought that we possibly had used slightly too emotive language. But, I mean, that's how people are feeling. They're feeling really hurt by what's happened and but shocked. Is it appropriate for your front bench to be using that language, your leadership? Possibly we shouldn't have made it so political and perhaps so emotional, like I said. But that's how people are feeling. You know, there's lots of talk on the street about that. Um, and people are feeling that the cuts have had a direct effect on services and that if we don't speak out about it it might happen again we don't none of us want to see another Grenfell and, and it is interesting isn't it Keith Glazer the way that Rosie you represent this community are you concerned about the divisions that we saw in that film um, there's no evidence of that when I'm talking to people to be honest and um, like Amber alluded to it wasn't just the students we've had investigations by journalists since the result uh, what happened in Canterbury who voted <laughs> and their conclusion seems to be it wasn't just students But actually we've spoken to people on this program who are who are angry really angry they feel okay. students have just come along they're not here for too long they don't live here ten years time they'll be gone and they've yet had a huge impact on, on who represents them in Parliament. It's a serious matter, surely. Okay, there's so many assumptions in that sort of summary there. I mean, A, why do students necessarily move on? They might decide to make Canterbury their home. They might have families there and work there. You know, also, there are so many issues that they're concerned in. They're getting engaged politically locally. Why can't we look at putting students on the city council, for example, and getting involved really, you know, with their community in that way? Okay, let's bring in uh, Keith, because there are big student population in Sussex. But there's so many assumptions that student are, students are only interested in voting about tuition fees. They're absolutely not. Amber was talking about mm. students working in the community. We heard students who were worried about their parents and their future. These are people who are future homeowners mm. who at the moment are having to start life with huge debts and also not be able to move out of home to a place of their own until their 30s. There's loads of things that they were. There was about. an interesting quote from a councillor in Plymouth where the student population is also believed to have had a big influence on the outcome of the election. He said many people feel disenfranchised by having such a large number of transient voters. From your point of view as the MP, I mean, if, for example, most of those 40,000 students have moved on in a few years' time, but you're still representing the population, mm. is that fair democratically? If the people who elected you aren't there anymore? 
I don't know. I mean, there'll be new students and new families and new sort of people coming yeah. to work for the university. Vote for you. Well, maybe not, but they've got the chance to vote exactly how they want, especially if they're registered. You know, I can't influence that. And if I'm doing the right thing, they'll vote for me. We'll see. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Now it's time for some of the other news you might have missed this week in 60 seconds with Yatunde Youssef.